Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and welcome to another episode of Clever Code. So in this episode of this series, we're going to be taking a look at two different implementations of Quicksort, one of which is uh, an implementation that I wrote myself a while ago, and then uh, the other version is a much more modern version using the C++ STL that I found online that I'd like to share because it shows a really clever use of um, uh, STD or std partition. So let's go ahead and get started. So we'll go to Quicksort and open up uh, quicksort.cpp, and we'll start out by a brief introduction to Quicksort and how it works. So uh, the main idea behind Quicksort and how it works is that we divide an array into uh, two subarrays. So we select a pivot, and this is just an element we're going to be comparing against, so we'll call it a pivot. So we select a pivot, we compare all the elements inside of, say, the vector uh, against the pivot, and we create two subarrays, all the elements that are less than or equal to the pivot and all the elements that are greater than the pivot. Right? After we've created these two subarrays, we insert the pivot in between those two subarrays, then we guarantee, that guarantees that the pivot's now in the correct spot in the total order. And then all we have to do after that is call quicksort again on the two subarrays. So for the two subarrays, we do the exact same process until we get down to a single element. Right? Single element's already sorted, and by that time, all the other elements in the array have sorted because we're basically finding one correct position for one element every single time uh, we complete you know, one call to this quicksort. So we divide an array into two spots or two subarrays, and we insert a correct element or the, an element into its correct position between those two subarrays. Uh, okay, so how does this, uh, how do we actually implement this, right? So we've got a quicksort here, and we've got this part called a partition, right? And we'll go back to this if statement later. This is just the base case for recursion. So uh, we call partition, and partition is what actually does this uh, creating of subarrays. So we have a couple of temporaries, low and high here. We'll kind of, you know, wave those off a little bit. And in this case, we choose our pivot to always be the last element in the vector. Right, so we always choose the rightmost element in the vector or subvector as our pivot. Then this for loop, we compare all the elements against the pivot. If the element is uh, less than or equal to the pivot, we just swap it into be the left-hand side of the vector or the subvector. And then at the very end, after we've swapped all the elements that are less than or equal to the pivot to the left-hand side, that means the right-hand side is all the elements greater than the pivot. So we just swap in the pivot in between those two spots it's in sorted order now, um, or that single element is guaranteed to be in sorted order. And then we just return the index of the element that we just put in its correct spot. Then based upon that pivot element, we sort the two, um, or we call quicksort on the two subarrays, right? And this goes on and on and on until we reach the base case. So L and P are just left in pivot, pivot also being equal to the rightmost element uh, like I said, I always choose the, uh, in this implementation, it always selected the rightmost element as the pivot, but you could choose another element as the pivot as well. Um, so this goes until L, uh, this condition goes false, and this condition will go false when L and P are the same number. Right? That means that it's the same index, we have a single element to sort, a single element is already in sorted order. So just kind of and so in that case, we just return immediately. We don't need to call anything else because one a single uh, element is sorted with respect to itself. So just kind of wrap that up. We basically just create two subarrays. We put um, the element that goes between those two subarrays, the pivot. Uh, we swap that in between the two. That element's in sorted order. Then we repeat that process for the two subarrays now until we get down to a single element. So what's good about this code? What's bad about this code? Well, it's not really... C++ at all, right? It's really just C. Despite the fact we're using a vector here, this could just immediately be swapped in with, say, a normal, you know, C array, right? So we're not really using C++ here. Uh, the really only plus side here is that we're, you know, implementing quicksort, which is a pretty good algorithm. Right? But other than that, you know, especially partition right here. Partition is not very clear. We've got these temporaries, low and high. We've got a for loop, which we're doing a comparison in. We're doing a swap based upon this this outer element called low, which is conditionally incremented. Then we have another swap where it's one pass, to say where low is, and then we return low plus one. All in all, it's very confusing to look at. Um, I had to look at this for a few minutes myself to you know, really refresh what I was doing here, uh, even though I wrote this code, uh, albeit a, a while ago now. 
all right, so how, do, how can we you know, really use the C++ STL to solve this problem? And it all comes from the fact that we don't need to implement partition. Partition is already implemented in the C++ STL, although it is slightly different, right? So uh, in this case, a partition from the STL or a stood partition, it doesn't work exactly like my implementation of partition does. Uh, all stood partition does is it takes two iterators and then it takes something that we use for a condition or a predicate. And then what it does is it puts all the element for which the predicate's true on the left-hand side. And then all the elements for which the predicate's false on the right-hand side. So it doesn't say, you know, move some pivot element in between those two, uh, those two subarrays, right? All it does is create two subarrays, right? But we can still use this to implement quicksort fairly cleanly. So how do we do that? So, uh, the, so here's our implementation called good quicksort. So we've got a, a vector of integers, uh, an iterator, right? So in this case, our implementation takes iterators rather than just raw indices like an int. So first and last, and on the first call, this will be equal to the vector.begin and the vector.end. And then we just check uh, for the base case. So in the base case, first is equal to last, basically the iterators are in the same spot. Um, so we just return, right? Because like I said, a single element is always in sorted order with respect to itself. So we don't need to go any further. Uh, we don't need to have any further recursive calls. So then this line, we're using two things from the STL distance and next, but you know we can kind of abstract this line away. Um, and this can just be interpreted as we're taking the middle element of our vector or our sub vector to be the pivot. That's really all this line means here. Um, Typically, this is a good choice, like I, I think I said a little bit earlier. You don't really want to pick the rightmost element or the leftmost elements of a uh, of whatever it is you're sorting, uh, mainly because that's more susceptible to some of the pathological cases. If some uh, vector is already in sorted order or reverse sorted order, it can lead to kind of poor results for quick sort. Uh, so a safe bet is to just choose something in the middle. Okay. So. Then we have calls of partition. And like I said, partition works a little bit differently. And again, this isn't the implementation of partition that we showed above, this is stood partition. Okay, so how does this work? So like I said, it takes a pair of iterators and then it takes something that uh, we use as our uh, predicate. Right? So this will return a Boolean value. So what are we taking here? So we're, we're capturing pivot, which is basically what we're comparing everything against we're using for our uh, predicate. And then we take all the elements right, from first to last, and we check to see if the element is less than pivot. So what does partition do in this case? It puts all the elements less than pivot on one side, and then all the elements greater than or equal to pivot and put it on the, the other side. And it returns mid one, which is the first element for which the predicate was false, right? So this will be the first element for which uh, this condition uh, returned false. Okay. So we're getting closer to a solution, but we're still not quite there, right? So we've got our subarray of all the elements less than pivot, and then the subarray of all the elements greater than or equal to pivot, but we don't have, we haven't made sure that the pivot element or a pivot element is in the correct spot, right? We've just made sure that all the elements greater than or greater than or equal to pivot are on one side and all the elements less than pivot are on the other side. Okay, so how do we get there? Well, we can just call partition again. In this case, what we do is we uh, we just ignore all the elements less than the pivot. So we start at mid one, right? So mid one basically chops off all the elements less than the pivot, and we go to the end of that, right? So we are only looking at the elements in the subarray that are greater than or equal to pivot, right? So again, we capture pivot again because we're going to be comparing against it, and then we have another comparison for our elements now. So how does this one work? So let's just think about this inner, uh, this inner comparison first. So when would pivot be less than an element? Right? Well, we already said that all the elements in this uh, side of the partition that we created up here are going to be greater than or equal to pivot. So in most of the cases, pivot will be less than these elements. What's the one case though where pivot will not be less than these elements? It's actually be going to be the case where the element is equal to pivot. That's the only case 
for which this comparison will be false. Right? So why does that happen? Right? Well, that happens because we already chopped off all the elements where the pivot could be less than them. Right? That's what we did right here. All the elements less than pivot, we put into one side of the partition, and then we chopped it off in the second comparison by starting at mid one. So the only case where this condition could return true is if the element is equal to pivot. Okay, so what we've basically done is we've taken all the pivot elements in that subarray that are greater than, uh, in that subarray that's for all the elements greater than or equal to pivot, we've taken all the elements that are exactly pivot, moved them to one side directly next to all the elements less than pivot, and then we've taken all the elements greater than pivot and put it on the other side of that. So now we have a chunk of pivot elements, including the pivot that we're comparing against, but we could have multiple elements that are equal to pivot now in the middle. Right? And those are all going to be in sorted order because now we have this case where all the elements less than the elements that are equal to pivot on one side, on the left-hand side, that was guaranteed by the first partition. And the second partition guaranteed that all of the elements that are going to be greater than partition or on the other side. Right? So that gives us uh, the case where now we've got, we can call quicksort again, so we can recursively call this from first to mid one. Right. So now we can do it for all the elements less than the pivot. That's what uh, this call does. And then for all the elements greater than pivot, right? and we could have multiple pivot elements that were, we've uh, put on the left-hand side of this call to partition. So we start at mid two, which is the first element that's greater than the pivot elements, all the way to the end of the sub vector or vector. Okay. So we've taken something that, you know, we had our own kind of messy implementation of partition, and we've basically reduced it to two calls to STL partition. Right? And we actually got some extra performance benefit here um, in terms of now we're making sure that if we have a whole bunch of elements that are equal to pivot, we basically skip those iterations by not including them in the later calls to quicksort, right? We just lump them all together and then we just skip over them because we know they're going to be in the correct place, right? So maybe a little bit of a performance benefit there as well. So for here, uh, let's just go ahead and compare the functional results. So we have a vector of integers right here. Uh, we just create 10 of them. We generate some random numbers between zero and hundred and we copy it, right? And then we call, uh, we print out the before for both. Then we go ahead and call quicksort for both of them. And then we return uh, both after, right? Or the results after sorting. So let's go ahead and compile this. So we'll do G++ on quicksort dash O quicksort. And then we'll go ahead and run quicksort. And you see that afterwards, they both produce the identical result, right? From 15 up to 93. And you see that, um, you know, looking back at this, we could just, you know, change this comparison of uh, to pivot is equal to element, right? We could just change that to this and it will work exactly the same. That's probably a clearer way to write that as well. So let's go ahead and run that. And we see we get the exact same result still. Um, yeah, because that's all that, that other case was really doing with the negation as well. It was just uh, making sure that the pivot was equal to the element because that's the only two cases that can happen here. Either the element will be equal to pivot or the element will be greater than the pivot right? because that's what we've guaranteed by this first partition. We have a subarray of all the elements less than the pivot and then all the elements greater than or equal to the pivot. All right, so that's gonna do it for today. Let's go ahead and wrap up. So we've got a very classic implementation of quicksort here. Um, you know, we, we manually wrote some partition thing but it's very C style. If we just know that we have partition available to us, we can replace all of this code with two calls to partition, right? Which is pretty clever, right? And so it's a very good thing to do. You have all these algorithms available to you. It's really important that you learn them uh, and learn how to use them and also learn how to clean up your code so you don't have, you know, a negation of a uh, lesson, uh, a negation of a, a comparison down here. Uh, when you can just write the comparison right out. That's probably a better thing to do as well. Um, but that's going to go ahead and do it for this video. Um, as always, you're more than welcome to check out any of this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. Uh, and you can even check out where I got this, uh, where I got this code example from. 
It's actually from cvpreference.com, right? And it was actually an example related to std partition. So at the very bottom, they show a couple use cases of partition, including this implementation of quicksort. Right? This imp implementation is just templated, though. Um, yeah, th this implementation is just templated. So I just took this and I added some comments and I went through it, make sure I understood it. You may also, there's also uh, another, uh, if you look at stood, if you look at all the standard library algorithms and you see something called uh, stable partition, you might be confused of what's the difference between partition and stable partition. So this stable partition just makes sure that uh, it preserves the relative order of all the elements. So, uh, so if you've got elements, you know, in an array, it makes sure that all the elements that are less than, say, whatever. So, if you're doing a comparison of, say, less than, it makes sure that all the elements that are, you know, less than some value you're comparing against, it just makes sure that relative to the original position in the array, they all wind up in the same partition, but in the same order they were uh, originally, right? Um, so that's the only reason with stable partition. In our case, we don't care about the order, right? So in our case, we could just use partition. We don't care if elements that are, say, less than the pivot get reordered in the subarray. We don't really, that's that's not something that we depend on. So we can just use partition instead of stable partition. And like I said, as always, you can check out this code at github.com slash coffee before arch. So this is under repositories, and then we can look at clever code. And here we've got uh, our implementation of quicksort. So feel free to check this out. Let me know if there's any problems with it. Um, I'm pretty sure that I was correct in just changing this to be uh, equal uh, instead of uh, pivot is less than the element or and then negated. Um, yeah, you, I think you could just change this to equal like I did in the code. But again, that's going to do it for today. Um, one, I guess, final note I should say before closing. Uh, you can also just call sort from the standard library. Right. Uh, if you really need to do sorting, uh, the standard library also implements sort, so you don't have to implement your own uh, implementation of quicksort. This is just a clever way that we can use partition to implement, say, quicksort. But uh, sorting is already implemented in the standard library algorithms as well. Um, all right, that's going to go ahead and do it. I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.